to grab a stick. Not too many. Welcome back to Equip to Endure. I am Rusty. If this is your first time visiting, welcome. We like to focus on all things self-reliance and emergency preparation. So if these things are of interest to you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with the videos we do. We try not to get too specific in one element of survival, we kind of look at the whole picture, and that's what we go after. So today, we've got a couple things that we're doing. One, obviously we're gonna talk about a bushcraft bag, but we've also got some continuing announcements about our E2E Christmas giveaway. So that's exciting. Let's get right into it. So this is the Kelty Red Wing 50. Now I have gone through several bags in my life as I'm sure you have. I've used a Maxpedition, I've used a Mystery Ranch, I've had an external frame backpack, as well as probably some others along the way. Now I got really excited about this particular bag about, I don't know, maybe close to a decade ago. I think I picked this one up eight or nine years ago. And there were a few key features on this bag that I thought lend themselves really well to a quote unquote bushcraft bag. Now, what the heck does that even mean? That's a great question. You know, as, as people who say they're into bushcraft or whatever, I mean, you can go really far in different directions with that. You get the straight like aboriginal guys who go out in their underwear <laughs> or you've got the guys that go out almost kind of cosplay historical period actors who want, you know, trapping style uh, elements from the 1700s, whatever. I'm not criticizing either one of those. It's just if you maybe want a little bit more of a, uh, a modern, maybe slightly more practical kind of approach to it, I think this is a really great bag for it. And I'm gonna walk you through some features and show you why. So right off the bat, let's start on the outside. Great hand holds, everything on this is built really durably. Out here, up top, you can hang it very easily. Now the admin compartment on the outside is exactly what you expect. It's nice and big and roomy. I've actually used it for things like, I mean, I do have a little touch of admin. I've got the notepad in there with the pen, but I also throw in the contractor bag. I have emergency bags in here as well. And I think I've even got, yeah, I've got a mini fishing kit as well as a yo-yo trap in here, I believe, two of them. So this is what I throw out here in my admin pouch. Now remember, and I'm sure if you have any experience with this, you also know that you can kind of move things around and sometimes you may like one kit versus another. This is just currently what happened to be kind of sitting in here and what I've tossed in for the video. I am a big fan of this top pouch, the top one here. It is nice and deep and roomy. I don't know if the camera will really pick it up, but it is a nice hole there that you can put stuff in that's separated from the main compartment. Now, I like to put things up up in here that I get to regularly. So that's gonna be bandana. I've got work gloves in here. I've got a headlamp up here. My fire kit I put up here. There's a fire kit as well as compass. So anything that you need to get to quickly, great spot for it. So again, there's five main compartments on this bag. We've gone through two of them. Now, here's what I really dug about the Red Wing 50. I think it's a great idea. I mean, maybe a little bit novel, but it works and I've loved it. So on both sides, there are long zippered pouches that have a pass-through behind them. So this is a, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. It's a Gawa Canyon Boreal 21 folding saw, the pack saw I really like. It's just barely over pound. It's a great saw for that. Behind this pocket, you can go, you've got a complete pass through right there behind this pouch and this is a good size pouch now here i currently have this loaded out with some extra bladed tools so if i don't happen to bring a full pack saw i can stick my um, laplander in there this is a abelias nbs tool really neat knife i've got an extra just a backup blade here in case i'm out with one of my kids a more knife that they can use and i think i've got a carving jack in here too by flex cut yep there it is so I also keep a strop in here for some tool maintenance as well. So 
That's some bladed tools in that pouch, and then it's got that pass-through. And at the bottom of the pass-through are these side pouch pockets. So you can simply, well, first of all, if you want to hold it a little bit tighter to the bag, you can go under the compression strap down here, slide it up behind the pouch, and then drop it in that pocket. That's not going anywhere. Now, I have yet to tumble down the side of a mountain wearing this thing, and I hope to never experience that. But anything short of that, these things do not come out. They stay in there nice. So on the other side, I've got that same full length pouch. And in this, I keep rope. So this is going to be paracord. I have some uh, tarred sane twine in there, as well as medical and sanitation. So that's in that pouch. And then same thing, the axe. This is a Husqvarna axe, I believe. Yeah, this is the 26 inch Husqvarna. So same thing, that can slide all the way in behind that pouch. It keeps it nice and snug. It doesn't jostle around while you're walking. It's almost as if backpackers know what they're doing when it comes to backpacking, at least my experience. Now, from a carrying standpoint, again, this is where the more traditional type bags, again, they're great for what they were, but this is where they just can't even compare is the technology in the carrying of these bags. These types of backpacks were built to basically walk across the country and be comfortable. So this harness is adjustable. You can adjust the height you want as well as the belt. Now let me show you why this belt is so important. When I was younger, I broke my back and it made things tricky for me. I had to be very careful about what kind of loads I carried and how. And when it comes to backpacking, this waist strap isn't just intended to stabilize a load, even though it does that. When you adjust it correctly, the load of the bag transfers through the waist belt and it sits on my hips. So I don't really feel that weight on my shoulders at all. And it doesn't wear me down. My hips and my legs are carrying that load instead of my back. I'm going to get that sternum strap connected. I don't think these are even right now. There we go. Now it's a nice tight load that I can walk much further, much more comfortably because of that adjustable harness and how it fits. And you can see too, the ax isn't going anywhere. The saw isn't going anywhere, nice and comfy. So let's look at that last main compartment. Now I am a big fan of shell style backpacks or clamshell, I should say where you can open them up all the way where they lay flat if you want them to. Now this can do that. You just release the compression straps and then that shell will open all the way up. As you can see, typically I don't need to do that. So I'll just leave that compression strap closed. And then you can see the main compartment. Oh, what do we have here? Oh, all right. So nice, big main compartment. You can run a water bladder down there if you want to. Sometimes I'll pull it out of the camelback, put it in there. I got my tent. I load that vertically. Some people argue about how to basically load out your kit, whether you put the things that you need first on top or whatever. If you do that, maybe your load can get a little bit wonky. What I like to do, I just run my tent vertically as well as my sleeping bag and other things in there. And, and I try to find the balance of proper weight distribution as well as what I need out first. And it works for me. Everybody kind of has their, well, not everybody. Lots of people have their own opinions on what's best there, but great compartment. And you saw that I have my Santa hat out. So it's time to get into character. Oh, 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 oh baby. All right. Here's what's so exciting. It is E2E Christmas time, everyone, and we've got you your very own Kelty Red Wing 50 for the winter. So this is one of the newer models. This is probably two or three generations newer than my old one. Brand new, still has the tags on it and everything. This is the base for the wilderness kit that we're giving away with the E2E Christmas giveaway. And we're also including a VanQuest 5x7 fat pack. This is great for medical if you want to use it for that. And then as by way of reminder for the EDC kit, we have this fantastic VanQuest Addicts 25. Now we already did a video on this. I think I'll put a link right there for you to go check it out. But this is for the EDC kit paired with the 4x6 VanQuest fat pack. <coughs> so here's the base. Now I wasn't planning on doing this, but I'll give you a little bit of teaser in this video. Here's just a couple things. 
Vargo has thrown in for these kids. These are not cheap items. So we've got an EDC bottle. We've got the Wilderness Kit. We've got an amazing Giant Mouse Knives Riv Titanium Blackout for the EDC giveaway. And Andy Roy is an old friend of mine and he wanted to get on the, the Christmas spirit too. So he made a very special bear paw to go in the wilderness kit. Now these are only some of the things. You can already see there's hundreds of dollars of stuff we're giving away right here. All you have to do to enter is go to equiptoendure.com slash Christmas. And I'll put the link below for you to do that. And you enter your email address. That's it. And then we're going to let the winners know prior to Christmas so that you can have a very um, spoiled Christmas <laughs> with these things. So over the coming weeks, we're going to release more videos announcing what we've added to the kits. And be sure to check back regularly on the page equiptoendure.com slash Christmas because we'll have that list updated with the items that will be included in the giveaway. So we're going to do videos on this stuff later. We wanted to focus on the bag, particularly the Kelty Red Wing 50. Hope you enjoyed that. If this is your first time with us, welcome again. Be sure to hit subscribe if you are interested in self-reliance or emergency prep type topics to up your game. And then until next time, in Omnia Paratus.